Hey, and welcome to this edition of In Conversation. I am with Mike Ford. He is a chartered engineer and part of the Bloodhound education team. Mike has been here. He's done a presentation at EngFest uh, where he's spoken a bit about himself, uh, how he got started, and how he's been working with, with Bloodhound. Mike, how are you? I'm uh, great and just had, came off the stage for which, a wonderful event. Uh, with uh, with all the youngsters here today, it's fantastic. Well, I, I know we we had a bit of a chat, but you've been here before actually, as a, in the other in the other side of watching other presentations. So, how did it feel to give a presentation? Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's it's fantastic. In fact, you know, it's I do quite a bit of those sort of things these days, and it's wonderful to be able to get the opportunity in what I call headquarters for me, because as a member of the IET, it's really great to be here. And, and you know, I was here for the uh, the president's address. Uh, not too long ago, and uh, it's nice to be on the other side of it and uh, experience that. Uh, so, uh, a nice box ticks in there in that respect, yes. Well, we're at the event EngFest, as uh, I've mentioned. I've, if you're not aware of EngFest, it's a, an event held for um, young people, young adults, uh, children at, at teenage years, to come and find out a bit, a bit about engineering and, and hopefully to be inspired. So. For you, Mike, how was it when you were a child? I mean, did you always aspire to be an engineer? Oh my goodness me! I mean, we, you know, we didn't have anything such as this back in uh, back in those sort of days, and uh, uh, the world would probably be a bit different if we did. I think, but uh, you know, I, in, in my my quest these days as a as an engineer, and I, I've had the uh, if you like the fortune to to be able to concentrate this last seven years on inspiring the next generation to science, technology engineering arts and maths um, you know I, it's something I miss I didn't get and I you know grab the opportunity wherever I can to tell girls boys everybody because let's face it this is this is not for girls it's not for it's for all this uh, steam is for everyone and that's a, another message that I'm really passionate about um, is to make sure that everybody knows that that uh, it is for all and with a diverse opportunities within steam uh, it's probably even more relevant today uh, as ever, but um, you know, probably what inspired me, and I didn't, uh, as I said in my talk, what inspired me, and it wasn't, I, I didn't know it at the time, but it was uh, the moon landings and, and going to space and that sort of stuff, because I, um, I was really interested in that, and whenever I switched the TV on and looked at one of the two channels in black and white that was available at the particular time, um, that's all it was about, and that subconsciously probably give me a bit of a nudge to go down that road. So interesting, you, you mentioned STEAM a couple of times there, can you explain to us what, uh, what STEAM is? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for about seven years and it was STEM quite actively in those, those early years of me doing it and it's moved, it's migrated to more of STEAM and, and as a chartered engineer I, I can relate to that because uh, uh, you know, it's really co good and, and to be creative as an engineer. It brings that dimension. So to be artistic, to be creative, to think outside of the box. Um, so it's not pure arts. It's all that creative side is is really important in the in the science and technology field today. Fantastic. And with uh, bloodhounds, and obviously that, that bit of that, that moon landing and those historical events, those m big engineering feats that you've, you you witnessed as a child. So you must have seen a land speed record attempt before. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I've never been fortunate to be there when it's been done live. I've always followed that and going back as far as um, the Campbells of this world and Bluebird, the, you know, the last wheel-driven car and Bluebird back in the 60s at over 400 miles an hour, then the move into sort of jet propulsion and rocket propulsion and just pushing the boundaries and, and, and you know, my talk, what's not possible, it, Things that don't seem to be possible now are possible. And I mean, who knows where we're going to be in the next 10 years and what's not possible. Um, as I say, you know, Alexa, make me a cup of tea. Not quite yet, but who knows? It'll soon be there. I believe it's not far around the corner, actually. Uh, so in terms of involvement with Bloodhound, and for those of you that aren't aware of, of the Bloodhound project, you really should be, uh, this is an attempt to beat the, the land speed record. And I think correct me if I'm wrong, but you're actually looking to achieve speeds faster than a thousand mile per hour? Well, um, yeah, the design speed of the car, the, the figures that have been 
historically, uh, the, the car is being developed for 1,000 miles an hour. So there's always a ceiling on that uh, in, in, in order to achieve 1,000 miles an hour. Because, you know, a 1,000 mile an hour car, it's an average of two runs. So you have to have the capability to go a bit faster. Um, so yes, it's uh, a 1,000 miles an hour is the target. And it is significantly above the current land speed record, set in 1997 at 763 miles an hour with a pure jet car um, thrust SSC. Now we're moving, which is a new departure for, the, the, for Bloodhound, moving to include rockets as well. So, so why are you looking to, to include both? What, what's the benefit? Well, jets struggle once you go particularly much above supersonic airflow at sea level. Jets with the, uh, with the airflow into a jet struggles with efficiency. So you've then got to then depart and go into more rocket-based technology once you get, if you like, faster than, uh, significantly faster than supersonic uh, speed, which is, a, let's say, about 760 miles an hour, was the speed of sound when we broke the Blackland speed record in 97. So with, with the project, now I think we're about seven years in uh, with, with Bloodhound. So um, what's been involved with, with the, the process to get to where we are now and, and how far is left before we actually see that, that, that attempt? Well, I think, I think going back to the actual start and the conception of Bloodhound and the, the, the thinking about shall we do it and shall we not was go, that goes back to 2006. Um, I've been involved from the education pr perspective about seven years. These projects, which are privately funded projects, are not only an engineering challenge, they are a financial challenge, sponsorship, all of those sort of um, complexities come, come into place and it tends to go in spurts. You get, you, you, you get some sponsorship and you, you make some significant steps and then that sort of uh, uh, stops and then you have to go and find some more money. So it's, it's, it's very much about um, the consistency and uh, and the funding to, if you like, push these boundaries back. And, and, and you'll have probably read, you know, your viewers may well have seen on social media and the likes and news channels that um, right at the back end of last year, that the project, the main um, programme, uh, went into some significant difficulties. Uh, but it's, um, I can report now, and it again been on the press, that the project has been rescued and uh, rejuvenated uh, and the, uh, in fact, in renamed from Bloodhound SSC now to Bloodhound LSR, land speed record car, and is now moving forward with the new team. Um, BloodhoundLSR.com, that's where you need to look to make sure you're up to date with the current development. Fantastic. Well, we'll make sure that we link to that down in the description, so do click through and have a look. So in terms of, um, is there a date set? Now, I'm aware, I, I saw a, a presentation uh, some years ago about the uh, some of the decision making behind uh, the area that would be used to do the test on, uh, which is which was, uh, truly insightful, fascinating. Um, but are we any are we that step closer? Obviously, with the setbacks, does that have a knock-on effect to when we might see that land speed record attempted? Uh, it has an effect. Uh, the new team are currently uh, evaluating when to when to announce when they're going to run, looking at where the car is, look at the engineering that's left to do. And that is, if you like, right current work in progress. So as far as um, that data is concerned, uh, it's best to, to refer to uh, bloodhoundlsr.com for the latest information. But as you, as you rightly say, um, we have had dates in the past and for various reasons, engineering reasons, um, technical reasons and financial reasons, those dates have slipped. But um, the new, I know the new team are currently working out the program for the future. So in terms of Bloodhound as a, as a project, I've had interactions over the years at different um, fairs or events such as Big Bang Fair um, held in the Midlands and, and the onus on it is very much around the educational part because obviously we see things like uh, the, the jump from space with Red Bull and, and Felix uh, some years ago. So. Is that, again, a conscious decision to make sure that this is about the educational purpose rather than the, the commercial purpose of being able to achieve it? Because I, I would imagine that the big players out there, the Red Bulls, would throw a bit of money behind it, go out and do it if they wanted to. Is this more about the education and trying to, to bring engineering to a younger audience? It's, it's very much about the education and the number one mission of Bloodhound SSC was to inspire the next generation. Now look, you know, I used to call that car our big dark blue and orange shiny thing. 
14 odd metres long. It's now our great big white and red thing because it's just changed its colour. Now, if we can't inspire some, some kids into going down the path, they might not go and build fast cars, but they might go and sort of, you know, they might go and build bridges or they might go and get, go into IT and all these other great areas of science. And, and we might just be that trigger that, uh, that is needed. And in the, in the seven years, I want to count, so quite often people say to me, how many kids have you actually sort of presented workshops to? Now, for me personally, and this isn't Bloodhound as a, as a whole, but for me personally, I've delivered either workshops or presentations to over 60,000 kids over those years in over 250 venues. And I know by some of the, the questions, and you can just see it in their faces, and suddenly, and when you talk about likes of Isaac Newton, and you talk about Isaac Newton's third law, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. They probably do that in, in a physics class and what have you. And, 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 but when, when you show them, and when I get my, uh, uh, sort of my, my combustion tube out and we, we show them an explosion and suddenly we, we explain to them every action there's an equal and opposite. That's what makes that car go. You, you can see the penny drop right in front. Wow, that's what it's about. You know, it's all sorts of applications like that, it's um, as, as, as Richard Noble says, inspiration leads to aspiration, leads to further education. It's just inspiring those, and, and it just gives them the nudge to go on that little bit further. And wow, you know, I've seen all sorts of, uh, you know, we, we run little, we run rocket cars that cross playgrounds at 70 miles an hour. I mean, what a cool job that is! And you see the kids really inspired by it, and uh, uh, it's got to, it's got to rub off somewhere. Mike, it's been fantastic speaking okay. to you. Good. Guys, Thank you. it truly is a fantastic project and one to keep an eye on. Uh, so do have a look in the description for the URL. Click through. Mike, how do you, how do you feel about our, our log cabin? Well, it's wonderful. A log cabin, eh? Who would have thought it? In the middle of the <laughs> in, home of the IET. In the middle of HQ, in, in the middle of the IET, a log cabin. Fantastic. No expense spared, eh? No, either. you know how we are. <laughs> Mike, thank you very so you. much. Guys, we'll see you again soon.